is so real I can feel the cold. It's like a whole world made out of ice. And yet I failed to wear gloves or mittens of any kind. <laughs> but despite that minor oversight, thankfully I have my coat and, uh, and my coffee here. Folks say that a great icy doom would come upon the world and therein terrible abominations would find their lair. And unto this our heroes stride, slippery boot and frozen finger both, yet with brave hearts. <laughs> oh, greetings programs. Furnail's the name. D&D's my game. Welcome back to Drunkens and Dragons. How to play D&D like a big old badass. It's been a little bit of a while. Been uh, distracted by a bunch of cool stuff, but man, I was here the whole time. I don't sleep, y'all. Working on my ice terrain. There it is. Woo! So I'll show you around on this crazy pile of stuff. Now, my fundamental... Okay, yeah, it, it, it actually isn't cold. That was all just an act to, you know, sort of, you know, heighten the... Yeah. What am I looking at here, you're asking? Well, this... It looks a little bit like a giant sort of castle or tangle of shapes, but we're gonna we're gonna deconstruct this bad boy. And um, the idea that I set out on when I was making this was not just to build ice terrain, which obviously I did, but to build a, a whole gameplay set. And I've gotten a much better sense over the course of the last year, uh, making stuff for my group and making stuff for all of you guys out there. Um, where I can make a more comprehensive set of gameplay tools, not just cool terrain props. So, you know, like when I was starting out, I was making a lot of stuff kind of like this little guy. Um, so this little guy is just basically like an obelisk of broken stone, it used to be a, a pillar or something like that. It makes a good piece of, uh, of what um, Black Magic calls scatter. So scatter is really useful. Scatter is just kind of generic ways that you can form all kinds of new structures. So here's, I have several of these sort of scatter pieces. And in the beginning of my terrain efforts, uh, so there's like the holy well hole. Can you even see that? I don't know. Let me start clearing things out. So anyways, my point was, when I was making this set, I found myself a lot more qualified and ready to make a gameplay kit rather than just lots of scatter options and sort of generic obstacles that are just used to sort of create gameplay pinches and gameplay space. So this time I've got a lot more going on and I'm excited about it. As you can tell by my level of enthusiasm, <laughs> well, I made the base. So I'm trying to, you know, I don't know, it was of dubious wisdom to begin the video with the whole thing built. But anyways, let's go into rapid time as I disassemble this. Cleaned it up. So the the one of the first pieces I made was actually I think one of these miniature walls. So this is just where I developed my techniques. So the techniques uh, really simple. I used a lighter to sculpt the styrene. Uh, you just do like these gentle upward strokes with your lighter. Just get your flame going and then shh, shh, shh. and what you'll get is these sort of cup shaped flutes. Uh, elmers smeared around some elmers. Um, and then glued on some sand and then just did your basic underpaint and dry brush process and then your dry brush also catches the uh, the edge detailing of the flutes that you did with your lighter so that was the where I was kind of figuring out the technique but then when you make a base it is much more to it there's a lot more going on it's a huge surface I had to bring in two or three more colors um, and then another thing is that a mistake I made on my forest base is that the moss and the, the sort of the gravelly kind of nature feel of it made some of the terrain pieces a little bit wobbly as far as how strong they sit on the surface and how flat. And I didn't want that to happen here, so I wanted to keep this really flat. So what I did is I did all the grid cuts 
um, and all the little micro damage that I do that you guys have seen in my other videos. Um, texturing, as Pillow Pow calls it. And then I did my glue and then my gravel layer. And then what I did is I used a sanding block, like, yeah. So I used this little guy and then just ran that over it several times so I get a really flat surface. So minis don't wobble and tiles sit really flat on it and it has a real sturdy feel. So if you want a sort of closer look, there's a look at the, um, the lighter made fluting. And then here's a look at the sort of beveled surface and how the colors played out. So the colors, it's built on a dark blue base and then you have sort of a cyan or a cerulean and then you've got like lots of white and using, at least on a piece this large, your biggest possible dry brush. So you want to dry brush, to do something this size, you want to dry brush like this big, like a big old, big old bad boy and be taught. A generic riser square is what I call them, I don't know, is really useful in gameplay. There you go. So this is just a really simple way to build emphasis in a map. This looks a lot like the first boss in uh, Ubers. You just have to run around to the corners to touch the obelisks to power down the boss, and then the paladin up here who's tanking the boss can do some damage on him, and then you got a rogue kind of hiding here. And here's a wolf. Okay. So already I've got a really nice capability to build levels. So anyways, what I was talking about was the riser. So over the year I've realized that like, uh, if you hear jingling in the background, by the way, it's not Santa Claus. That's the coon dog. These guys are really handy. Make these guys. I, I could see how more than one might be handy, but my rooms tend to not get that crazy. So anyways, there's a piece. Um, really like having that piece around. Um, and you'll notice too, this isn't a modular tile system like you know my reversible floor system this is back to the sort of board system so to me they, they represent two very different types of terrain the modular tile system for me is negative space it's it's tunnels cut into solid space like using the unreal engine if anybody's ever done that it's like tunneling the the, the players get a feeling of tunneling Using boards like this is much more a sensation of large chambers or even outdoor spaces. And, and that difference can be really fun in the game. So if I really wanted to be hardworking and do my homework properly, I would follow this project up with a set of ice modular tiles for when they go into narrow tunnels and stuff. Honestly, I have put so much work into this that I'm, I'm a little hesitant to undertake that right now. There's a lot going on. Man, I wish I had had these in my stone set. I might have to go back and make some. So if you can see the top view of this piece, this is a curved piece, a corner piece. So in my stone set, a lot of times I'll take two walls and join them just by abutting them. <laughs> abutting. Nice corner piece and it lets me make much more complete feeling spaces like this. So even if I wanted to make a small space, you know, see, I can do this kind of stuff. I can't do that with my stone set right now. See, check that out. That's cool. So there's like a narrow entry with this sort of little, and then you can put some scatter around to make this feel built in. And there you go. So if you, I noticed that some crafters really like this enclosed kind of dungeon feel, even though it can block off some of your mini view and make play sometimes a little bit clumsy, it can really convey the world in a way that can really assist your imagination make players act crazier and make the whole session more fun. So now I have that option with some of these curved walls. I learned from my last set too that if you're gonna make walls, make a long wall and a short wall. You will, you will love that you did that. It's really handy. So you can make big things, small things. You know, if you wanna make like a removable blocker like this. Okay, then on that exact note, as far as removable blockers go, I knew that I wanted to do that because ice, you know, you have like a, an ice wall, you shatter through it or you want to trap the players in ice or other things like that, right? These little guys, these are just simple little panels which are made out of thin pieces of styrene rather than a big chunky wall. It's more like a thing that could be a floor panel for a slightly raised floor or you can use it as a sort of a lightweight wall which kind of implies I'm destroyable in there they smash this down and it's on the ground like that also you could use it for an extra slippery spot you could use it for a sort of a trigger panel where they have to jump over it see it's in the it's in the corridor and they have to get around that panel somehow and so on and so forth I knew that I just wanted a thinner lighter panel to be able to execute more gameplay more traps 
more dynamic pieces where the, the ice is either forming, shattering, sliding, and other things like that. So that's really cool. I don't have that in my stone set. Staircases that could be handy in a couple of scenarios. So I've got a big one. I don't know about you guys. I love having heroes fight uh, bad guys on stairs. There's something really cool about it. It's very Casa Doom, but it's also just provides a, an interesting breakage to the terrain where it feels very exciting. More scatter, and the, this is big scatter, so it matches the thickness of the walls, like that. Whereas some of this thin scatter, like these guys, is much thinner. So this is another thing I wanted to support, would be able to, you know, do this kind of sacred architecture kind of feel. So I did these tall, thin pieces. And then also did, you know, a big exit or entrance. Those are always super handy. Um, sorry if I'm looking to the right. I can't tell what you can see or what you can't. So it's like this ice color on camera is just like, wow, it's all blown out. I've got some silly stuff going on. I mean, you guys know how I love spike traps. So I made some ice spike traps. Um, I made two of these. So these are just more styrene, but using the, uh, the lighter technique, to fry the styrene into these nice shapes. Now, this is what you're gonna find out. You get your lighter out and cut some shapes out of styrene and then just you just wanna gently use the sort of peripheral heat of the flame. If you put the flame right on the styrene, it'll curl and melt and it kinda of doesn't give you what you want unless you want like a slimy, kind of a melty look. But if you just barely touch it with the heat like that, you know, just like right as it starts to singe, you'll hear it then you can get these really nice hard edged shapes and actually there's a side effect which is great I don't know if you can hear it but this lighter cooked styrene is harder and more sealed than the open styrene so it's easier to paint and it's more durable and it just feels a little more like plastic because the the flame like you know makes the styrene molecules <laughs> get dense and then there's atoms and the like Einstein's in there and Here's another little sort of floor panel bit that I made. It's just a little blob. So I can have a little blob of super cold ice or a part of the ground that's going to shatter or a pressure plate's going to trigger a trap, something like that. Did some more scatter that's more broken. So like that. So this is like a, a jagged shard rather than a sort of a pillory piece. And you know, scatter is great because you can even make walls out of it. If you kind of line it up, it feels like a wall and stuff like that. Now here's a silly one. So this is a what I, I call my seesaw piece. Um, so on the one hand, it can just be a lump like this. If you can see that, yeah. So it's like a lump, so it could be a little bridge or you know whatever, you could use it to sort of go between two walls like that. Um, but also, this is just where I'm just acting silly. I wanted to make a seesaw launcher like this. So <laughs> I don't know how this is gonna come into gameplay, but it's gonna be amazing. So see that balances, and then if one person steps off, you get this silly seesaw. I, I don't know what the hell's gonna go on with that, but I just thought it might be something my players have never seen. It might be hilarious. And if it's dumb, I also I just have another nice little piece of miniature wall that isn't super heavy and big, so I can do another either removable barrier or a magical ice wall or something like that. Um, and I have several pieces for that purpose, like this kind of I wouldn't call this a wall or anything, but it's just a nice little piece of blocker just to make the whole thing feel more organic. Um, so, you know, you just kind of start winging it. And, you know, I was watching Wylock's video earlier today, his newest one, uh, where he shows his whole dungeon. And that dude's crazy, man. He does, like, the whole dungeon is all planned out, and then he executes it, like, on point. That's unbelievable to me. Whoa! Dude, you got brain cells, man. That is amazing. He must not be huffing styrene fumes. I can never remember the exact plans of a room. I just remember high concepts. Like, I know I want X, Y, Z. So just, and I know it's kind of an L shape or something like that. And then while we're at the table, I'll just build it out really quick. So, you know, I'll just be like, oh yeah, I remember I wanted a big exit. And then I think there's a thing here and there's a thing here. And then, yeah, this frost giant is, is in this room. And it works great. Like, I know that this is nowhere near as precise. And then, like, there's an exit. Where's my door? Here it is. There you go. So it's nowhere near precise, but this is just how I operate. You guys know me. And boom, there's your board. So you enter here. You jam around. Maybe there's, I don't know, something cool right there. And you can muck with it. And there's some, some bad guys in there. 
And then you come through the doorway of Frost Giant, you battle him, and then there's a door in the back, and he doesn't want you to go through the door, and you knock this pillow over, and everything's cool and fun. Okay, so that is the ice set. That's, that's just about all the pieces. Um, I mean, not inventory piece for piece, but like here they are. There's a lot of curved walls. There's a kit of six walls or something like that. There's tons of scatter. There's like 14 pieces of scatter. Um, you've got stairs, you've got your cool riser. You can even put your riser on end like that, make something crazy go on. Oh, and then here's a good one. Well, now I've made a big mess. All right, here. I almost forgot one of my coolest pieces. Two of my coolest pieces. So first of all, this guy. Well, that's just, an, that's, a, that's, a, that's a blueberry donut, hankering for a name. No, this is a, a multi-use thing right here. So I've got one side that's pure ice and one side that's covered in sort of crusty snow. I made one... A part of it sort of flat so you could stand it up like this to make a portal because everybody loves portals right this clearly needs some uh, some pennies in its bottom but anyways there's your portal and but then also it'll sit like this so you can make you get your piece of black felt right here boop, put that down and then boop, and you got a hole here let me see if I can there you go see that hole right there I got a bottomless ice hole. <laughs> Don't be an ice hole. <laughs> Just make one. Don't be one. So that's really cool. And then finally, um, well, I, I made a little frosty torch as well. And then I made a frosty door. Um, and then I've got this cool little guy. So this is uh, a dice case. So when you get your standard set of polyhedrals. So all I did, it's just like my gelatinous cube, only a little taller. I just took the dice case loaded it up with some hot glue and some white sand and then did my dry brushing with blue and white on it. And now I can, there's my little guy, I can freeze him solid in a block of ice like that. And you can see the bad guy, you can see the mini in there and it's totally awesome. Thanks for watching you guys. This is my new ice terrain set. It's gonna be awesome. Um, it's a big part of me taking my campaign to the next big chapter, which is this year uh, where I'm going to basically shatter the world of Toro or Earth as some people know it and basically start to bring in a bunch of the world building from A Sundered World by Awful Good Games into my D&D 5th Edition game. Um, I I'm a weirdo because my D&D 5th Edition game is in a dungeon world setting and my dungeon world game which starts in two weeks is going to be in Forgotten Realms. <laughs> so. Wow. All right, guys, I am going to get out of here. I got like a million other projects to do today. It's been great showing you my new junk that I've been working on over the holiday season. Thanks for watching, everybody. Strength, honor, and ice. I will see you around. Looking forward to 2016. Cut to the close-up of the Frozen Paladin.